رمضان ذا مانت اوف بليسنجز صهر افطار تراويح ليلة القدر اعتكاف عيد الفطر and many other practices that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him did in this month of fasting I'll be there for you throughout this glorious month of Ramadan let's make it more fruitful and devout worthy share it with me every day throughout this month of Ramadan let's benefit from Ramadan meet Dr. Zakir Naik in Ramadan a date with Dr. Zakir next on Peace TV Pearls of Prophet Muhammad Peace be upon him Abdullah bin Mas'ud May Allah be pleased with him Narrated that the Prophet Peace be upon him said Truthfulness leads to albir That is piety Righteousness And every act of obedience to Allah And albir leads to paradise And a man keeps on telling the truth Until he becomes a Siddiq That is a truthful person Falsehood leads to al-fujur That is wickedness, evil doing, etc And al-fujur leads to the hell fire And a man keeps on telling lies Till he is written as a liar before Allah Agreed upon Sahih al-Bukhari Volume 8 Kitab al-Adab Book of Manners Chapter 69 Hadith number 6094 Sahih Muslim Volume 4 Kitab al-Bir Vassala al-Adab Book of Virtues, Good Manners And Joining of the Ties of Relationships Chapter 1079 Hadith number 6307 You are watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Oh, you who believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah. The pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan. Night of Ramadan Welcome O Ramadan It is Ramadan It is Ramadan Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi May the peace, blessings and mercy of Allah be upon you all. And welcome to this, the first in a series of interviews and question and answer sessions regarding Ramadan. Entitled, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakir. I am your host, Yusuf Chambers. I myself will be interviewing Dr. Zakir Naik and asking him your questions regarding important topics to do with Ramadan. Ramadan has a very special place in my own heart. Sixteen years ago, after a struggle of more than ten years, I stumbled upon Muslims deep in the worship of Allah during this blessed month, Ramadan. After a struggle of more than ten years, I went through Christianity, Hinduism, Jainism, materialism, socialism, and many other isms that you and I wouldn't even recognize, even if I tried to tell you, you wouldn't recognize them. Subhanallah. Now, 
brothers and sisters, during this blessed month of Ramadan, Allah revealed the last testament, His last testament to mankind, the Qur'an. And the Qur'an is still with us. Can you imagine this? This is why this month of Ramadan is so special to the Muslims, not just the Muslims, but non-Muslims. Indeed, I came to Islam during this blessed month, for when I encountered Muslims that were not practicing their deen, and then suddenly they started practicing in that one month, I felt obliged to look into the books of Islam and search for the truth. I found the truth and a few days later I started fasting. A few days later I took the shahada. Alhamdulillah, this blessed Islam is just too good for people to overlook. Brothers and sisters, Ramadan, the month of mercy, the month of forgiveness, the month when the blessed Qur'an was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Ibn Abdullah in the desert. He never left the desert. He was illiterate. And yet, the whole of mankind received the mercy from this illiterate man. This is the month of Ramadan. This is the month, and this is why this series of programs is so incredibly important for you and for me to make sure that we observe and we watch. In this program, as I said, I will be your host, brothers and sisters, and I will be joined every single day by a person who you do not need much of an introduction to. His acumen and his profession, originally he was a medical doctor, trained as a medical doctor, and once he told me that he considered himself to be a medical doctor, a doctor of the human body. Latter, he explained to me that I became a doctor of the human soul. And this is obviously a reference to the fact that Quran and Sunnah had entered his heart and he had felt the need to give dawah upon that. For the last 11 years, my dear brothers and sisters, he has delivered over a thousand lectures on the international arena, on television, print-based media, radio, and he's the author of many important books on the topic comparative religion and Islam. His critical analysis and his ability to quote verbatim from many religious scriptures the world over being all of the major religions in the world, my dear brothers and sisters, is unparalleled. Therefore he's a resource for humanity and I furthermore would suggest that without further ado I should invite him to join us. Dr. Zakia Abdul Karim Naik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kif halak? Alhamdulillah. Please have a seat. Well, Dr. Zakia, is there any information that you need to impart to the viewers of Peace TV before we start this long series of interviews and question and answer sessions regarding Ramadan? A date with Dr. Zakir. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala rasulillah. Wa ala ali wa sahibi ajmain. Amma abad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rabbi shahi sadri. Wa yasilli amri. Wa ahlul uddata min lisani yafkahu kawli. Before we start this long series of episodes, Ramadan date with Dr. Zakir, I would like to make my position very clear that I consider myself to be a student of knowledge. I consider myself to be a talib ilm. I don't consider that I'm a scholar to give fatwas. That's why some ruling is concerned. And as far as this topic on Ramadan, there are various issues and there are various differences of opinions as far as different scholars are concerned, as far as different schools of thought are concerned. Since there are only four verses in the Quran dealing directly with Ramadan, that's Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 83, Verse number 184, verse number 185, and verse number 187. There are indirectly another few verses, but directly only four verses. So most of the rulings are based on the hadith. And some scholars have used Zaif hadith, some have used Maudu hadith, some have used Sai hadith. So as far as what I'll be answering, it will basically be the views of the few scholars. Only I'll be selecting those scholars who I feel have quoted on the basis of Quran and Sai hadith. So it may not agree with some of the viewers' view which they used to, our opinion should always be based on Quran and Sahih Hadith. 
when required, I may give the difference of opinion different scholars. I'll name the scholars if required. Most of the time, I may not name. But I'd like to make it very clear at the outset that all the answers as far as Ramadan issues are concerned, none of them are my own answers. They are basically some or the other scholars who have said it. And I'll try my level best to name the scholars whenever required so that no one feels that I'm trying to give my own opinion. But I always believe that the answer should be based on Quran and Sahih Hadith. So that I'll try my level best. And inshallah, as far as possible, whenever I quote Hadith, I will try and give the references, whether some say Bukhari or say Muslim, the volume number, as well as the Hadith number, so that people can, you know, check it up and as far as possible, the Hadith I'll be quoting will be authentic and similarly with the verse of the Quran. And that's my normal method of giving replies so that people, whenever they get the answer, they get some authentic source of Quran and say Hadith. And whatever right or good that comes out from the mouth will be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever wrong and mistakes that come from my mouth will be from my side and from the side of the shaitan. So I seek refuge with Allah from sitting the accursed. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may this series be beneficial for all of us, including the viewers, inshallah. Ameen. Jazakallah khair. Now to the show. This show comprises of two separate parts. The first part will be a live interview between myself and Dr. Zakia Naik regarding the topic, a chosen topic about Ramadan. And the second part will be your questions answered by Dr. Zakia Naik on the particular topic of the day. Alhamdulillah. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to review the list of topics that we will be discussing, inshallah, over the next 34 days. And by the way, brothers and sisters, you might be wondering why on earth we're covering 34 days. Are we strange? No, we're not strange. In actual fact, we're so concerned about all the brothers and sisters all in different parts of the world that, of course, that Ramadan occurs at slightly different days, one day here and there, different. So we're covering all the world and all the Muslims, inshallah. May Allah accept it from us, inshallah. Right, without further ado, let's go through the list then brothers and sisters the first day topic number one episode one and two let's welcome Ramadan part one and two episode three and four common errors committed by Muslims during the month of Ramadan part one and two episodes five and six introduction to Ramadan part one and two episodes seven and eight when is fasting obligatory and exempted part one and two episodes nine and ten Acts that invalidate the fast, acts prohibited during fasting, part 1 and 2. Episode number 11, 12 acts permitted during the fasting, part 1 and 2. Episodes 13, 14 and 15, acts recommended and discouraged during fasting, part 1, 2 and 3. Episodes 16 and 17, Suhoor and Iftar, part 1 and 2. Episodes 18 and 19, Objectives of Fasting, part 1 and two. Episodes 20 and 21, The Benefits of Fasting, Part 1 and 2. Episodes 22, 23rd, Ramadan, The Month of Repentance, Part 1 and 2. 24 and 25, Ramadan, The Month of Supplications, Part 1 and 2. Episodes 26, 27 and 28, Qiyam al-Layl, Part 1, 2 and 3. Episodes 29, 30, Sighting of the Moon, Part 1 and 2, 31 and 32, brothers and sisters, Eid al-Fitra, Part 1 and 2, and finally, 33 and 34, from this Ramadan until the next Ramadan, Part 1 and 2. Now we'll have a short break. Inshallah, we'll meet again. It is Ramadan. Ramadan beckons us to give our zakat, an important part and a pillar of Islam. Several fatwas of distinguished scholars of Islam worldwide state that zakat can be given to support a non-profit Islamic satellite channel whose aim is to spread the truth of Islam. Every dollar you contribute helps Peace TV to refute allegations against Islam, misconceptions about Quran. What better choice do you have to spread the truth of Islam than Peace TV? Support Peace TV.
send your zakat and donation to Islamic Research Foundation International, Islamic Bank of Britain, Coventry Road, Birmingham, UK. Account number 0113201, sort code 300083. Peaceful, 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 peace. Peace TV, peaceful, peaceful, the solution for humanity. Why the God created Satan? His name is Azazel. He is from the jinn. But jinn becomes Satan. What is the origin of uh, God himself? God will never appear to us in any form. This is what we believe in Islam. Is there anything in Islamic to discuss about this rebirth? If you die in Islam, say you are not dying actually. You are transferred to another world. <laughs> It is Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. And I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers. And today we're discussing the topic, let's welcome Ramadan. Brothers and sisters, these topics were decided upon in consultation between myself and Dr. Zakia Naik. Dr. Zakia, particularly, what are your comments on the selection of these topics? Alhamdulillah, all the topics that we have discussed and have categorized, Alhamdulillah, in different days, so that it will benefit the viewers knowing about the details of the month of Ramadan. And it will also help me in replying to the question that are going to pose to me, because many a times, some of the questions, they will overlap. So I will see to it that I reply specifically on the day that the topic I've asked and I see to it that I will reply in detail on that specific day and if it's supposed to be mentioned earlier then maybe I will just give a brief comment but one point to be noted is that most of these topics I feel should be discussed much before the month of Ramadan starts there may be few topics which may be discussed any time of the year for example voluntary fast, these topics can be discussed any time of the year. There are some topics like Atikaf and Laylat Rukad, which should be discussed just before the last 10 days, which we'll be doing inshallah. And some topics like Eid al-Fitr should be discussed just before Eid. But most of the topics that we'll be discussing, they should be discussed before Ramadan. For example, we will be discussing Iftar and Suhoor on the 8th day. We'll be discussing things or acts that invalidate the fast on the 5th day. And we will be starting our fast on the 1st day of Ramadan. So it doesn't make sense. So actually we should start much before, at least 3 or 4 weeks before the month of Ramadan begins. But I do agree that the reason we are starting from day one of Ramadan is because more of Muslims watch the Islamic programs in the month of Ramadan than on any other days. So the viewership in the month of Ramadan is much higher. So Alhamdulillah, it's right that we're starting on day one, but it should be shown again maybe after a few months so that it is a preparation for the next Ramadan. MashaAllah. Well, all the topics, Dr. Zaka, seem to have been logically positioned and scientifically chosen by yourself. Um, uh, one thing I do appreciate, though, is that um, we've added in the first couple of topics, which are, let's welcome Ramadan. So that's very logical that the first day, everybody's very keen to, you know, go about Ramadan in the proper way. So that would be, that'll be very beneficial for the viewers. And secondly, common errors which are committed by Muslims during this month, the second day. So the first two days are health warnings, if you like. Right. Yeah? Right. Alhamdulillah. Now, let's go straight into the questions regarding the preparation. What did the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa do in order to uh, welcome Ramadan? What was his preparation for Ramadan? In the hadith which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, Ram number 3, Book of Fasting, hadith number 1969, the wife of the Prophet, Hadad Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she says that the Prophet, he never fasted any month completely except the month of Ramadan. And in no month did he fast as many days 
as he fasted in the month of Shaban. So from this hadith we come to know that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to welcome the month of Ramadan, he is to start, he is to prepare himself and fast more in the previous month, that is the month of Shaban. That was his way, how he is to prepare for the month of Ramadan. And further if you read the Sahih Hadith in Tirmidhi, chapter number 50, Hadith number 3451, which says that Talha, may Allah be pleased with him, he said on the authority of his father, that his father, that is his grandfather, he said, Whenever the Prophet saw the new moon, he used to always pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, O oh Allah, bless us in this month. And he used to mention the name of that month. And then say, that please keep us steadfast in faith in this month. This was the way the Prophet always used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever he saw a new moon. It wasn't specifically only for the new moon of the month of Ramadan, but it was for all new moons whenever he used to see. And his special way of welcoming the month of Ramadan was that he used to mention about the coming of this blessed month to the people. And it's mentioned in Muslim Ahmad, Ahmed, Ram number 2, page number 230, Hadith number 7148, where Prophet Muhammad used to tell the people that, O oh people, this blessed month is approaching you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you that you fast in this month. And the gates of heaven will be open in this month. And the gates of hell will be closed. And the devils will be chained. And in this month, there is a night which is better than a thousand months. And if anyone is deprived of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing in this month, he is truly a deprived person. So here we come to know that this is how Prophet Muhammad used to welcome this month and he used to tell the good news of the blessed month to come to all the people. MashaAllah. The next question to you is, what should we do when Ramadan approaches? The first thing we should do is we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us witness this blessed month of Ramadan once again. And we have to thank him for his mercy and we have to ask forgiveness in this month so that all our previous sins will be forgiven. And we have to thank Him for all the ni'amat He has given us, all the blessings, all the love. This is the best month. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 185, it says, fihi al Quran, nas." which means that Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed as a guidance for mankind and signs for guidance and judgment between right and wrong and Allah further says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 183 Allah says Ya amanu, O you who believe Kutiba alaykum al siyam Kama kutiba ala lazina min kablikum Lallakum tatakun O you believe Fasting was prescribed to you As it was prescribed to people who came before you So that you may learn Self-restraint The word used here is tatakun Sinu taqwa So that you learn God consciousness So that you learn piety So that you learn righteousness So this is the month in which a person can become more righteous. This is the time when our taqwa can be the height. And this is a month, it is an annual training. It is a sort of an overhauling of the body. How we have that every machinery requires some sort of servicing, maybe every three months, maybe every year. And if you allow me to call the human beings as the best machinery in the world, doesn't it require a servicing or overhauling? So Ramadan is an annual overhauling of the human body. It is a spiritual and moral training for the human being. And it is a purification of the body, mind and soul. This is the month where we can increase our taqwa. We can increase our patience. 
and we can derive the benefits and the guidance from the Quran. Subhanallah. Jazakallah khair for those answers. Now, alhamdulillah, this is the part of the show, as we promised, that if time permitting, we had time to uh, receive some of your questions relating to the topic, we would do so, and we do have a little bit of time. So, Dr. Zakir, first question. People welcome Ramadan with certain sayings. Ramadan Mubarak. Some people say it's a bidah, and others say it's a sunnah. What is your uh, ruling on this? To welcome month is good, alhamdulillah. And our Prophet always informed the other people about this month. And as I mentioned earlier, that a beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is mentioned in Musnad Ahmad, Ram number 2, page number 230, hadith number 7148, which is also repeated. It is mentioned in Sunan Nisai, chapter number 5, hadith number 2106, that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to always tell the people when the month used to approach, when it used to come. The Prophet used to tell the people in advance, O oh people, the blessed month of Ramadan is approaching you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you that you fast in this month. So the Prophet used to welcome this month. He used to wish other people. The same way today, if we wish as the Prophet said, the blessed month is approaching. If someone says Ramadan Mubarak, this Ramadan Mubarak is more often said in the Indian subcontinent. By the Indians, by the Pakistanis, because this word Mubarak, though Barqa is an Arabic word, Barqa means blessing, and it is nothing but blessed month. But when the Indians and Pakistanis, when they use the word Mubarak, it is more of a sort of congratulation. When someone passes examination, they say Mubarak in Urdu, which is derived from the Arabic word Barqa. So when Ramadan comes, they wish Ramadan Mubarak, saying that it is the blessed month, or a sort of congratulating and wishing each other that the blessed month is approaching. So according to me, it's not a beda. You can welcome the month. It's a good thing that you're calling this month a blessed month. And you're informing other people, reminding them that in this month is a lot of blessing. So according to me, it's not a beda. But how you wish, the word you choose, that is buba. That's optional. Like in Indian subcontinent, we use the word Ramadan Mubarak. In the Gulf countries, they use Ramadan Karim. So all these words are good. The holy month or the blessed month or the month of forgiveness. So the choice of the words is yours. But the Prophet Muhammad he used to say to the people that, O oh people, the blessed month of Ramadan is approaching. So I feel people should wish each other and they should remind each other about this blessed month. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Zakir Naik. That brings an end to the questions, unfortunately. We don't have more time. Otherwise, you can answer so many others that we've received on email from our viewers of PCV. Brothers and sisters, Jazakallah khair. It has been an absolute pleasure listening to Dr. Zakir Naik's uh, answers. Tomorrow, we'll be discussing Let's Welcome Ramadan Part 2. So I hope you'll join us then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. حافظين ذاكرين قانتين خاشعين مسلمين مؤمنين للإله عابدين شهونا صب وعتق وقنوت فيه صدق يومنا صبر ورق بدموع البائسين رمضان قد أهل بالصيام وأطل مصعدا أهلا وخلا A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. The most profitable business. Would you like to know the business in which you earn the maximum profit? The secret is given in the glorious Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 261. The example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed of grain, which grows seven spikes. In each spike is a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies his reward to whom he wills. If you spend your wealth in the way of Allah, you will get a return of 700 times. In business terminology, you will get a profit of 70,000%. Is there any business you know of in which you will get a better return? Invest today in the way of Allah. Peace TV, the solution for humanity.